Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video we will explore the new shared element transition included in the Compose Animations library by default now. So we can finally have shared element transitions that look like this. We have a list of items and we can click on an item to get to a detail view and the transition in between is animated. This is what we will build. If we navigate back then it will animate back. Of course you can also speed up that animation. It will also work for other images. So I think a very cool look and definitely something that will make your app look more high quality if you have such a list and detail screens. Also, this is now the last call for anyone interested in my Android premium courses, especially the new bundles. Tonight, the 25% discount will expire and all prices will rise again. So if you're serious about Android development and you want to learn the industry relevant skills, link in bio. One thing that I've already done is I've included two images here in our drawable folder and I would recommend you to do the same. You don't have to use the same images as I am. If you want so, you will also find them on my GitHub repository, which I'll link down below. But in the end, you just need two images as a demonstration here. And then before we can actually use this new shared element transition API, we need to include the proper dependencies. So right now it's included in Compose version 1.7.0 alpha 7. So it's still an alpha dependency we have to explicitly include here. We can do so by opening our Gradle scripts, opening our version catalog, and then here we can duplicate one of these compose dependencies or just paste those that I've already added on GitHub. So these two uh, dependencies we need on the one hand compose animation, which includes this dependency together with a version we have to create in a moment. And we of course need navigation compose in order to na navigate from one screen to another. So let's add these two versions on the one hand to compose animation which is the version 1.7.0-alpha7. And for the navigation compose dependency, we're going to use version 2.7.7. We can then synchronize this and also add these new defined dependencies to our build.gradle file. So let's open that here, module app, scroll down to the very bottom. And here we want to add implementation libs android x um, compose.animation. And on the other hand, we have ellipse um, Android X navigation.compose. Synchronize this again. And now we are ready to get started with coding and using this in our app. Let's close these two and get back into our Kotlin plus Java file folder. And in here, I first of all want to create a little list screen and a detail screen just with very minimal setup so we can test the transition between these two. So in our root package, let's have a list screen will be a normal file and in here we can create a composable function called list screen. On this list screen we will pass an on item click lambda which will on the one hand give us access to an integer and a string. So the integer will be the drawable resource ID of the uh, image we clicked on and this will be the text next to it so that we can animate both of these because the next screen actually needs to know which element so which composable on our screen animates to which. So here we can say unit we can then define our drawables here just as a static list, um, just as a little demo. We first have a drawable Kermit 1 in my case and Kermit 2. You, of course, replace that with whatever images you have. This example will, by the way, also work with as many images as you might have because it should, of course, work for every single item in the list. Then, as for most list screens, we will start off with lazy column in order to display all of our items. We can give this a modifier of modifier fill max size to just fill our whole screen. We can add some vertical arrangement of arrangement spaced by 16 dp just to add 16 dp of spacing between each item. Alt enter to import dp. And let's also add some content padding of padding values 16 dp so it doesn't look that cramped. Then inside this lazy column, we're going to have an items index block so we get a reference to both the item we loop over here and the index of that icon of that item. Um, so the list we want to loop over is our drawables list. So the list of resource IDs. And then we get each index, first of all, and then the corresponding image resource ID that belongs to that. We can then show these in a row. So just like here, we show this as a demo so you see what I'm building. We have a row of items. On the left, we have our image and then the text right next to it. So let's have a row, make it fill the whole width of our screen, fill max width. And this will also be clickable since if we click on it, we want to perform the transition. Here we say on item click, we pass in our RAS ID and our text of that um, specific list item, which we can create here by just saying, okay, that's item plus the index. 
Here we say text, and then we don't have any more errors. Inside that row, we will now put our image. We can use a painter in order to load an image from our resources. When we say painter resource, pass in our RAS ID we get from the lazy column. Let's ignore the content description here, and we need to give it some sort of size. We can do this with a modifier. Modifier, we say the aspect ratio of that image is 16 to 9, so 16 divided by 9F, and then we give it a weight, so um, a relative width of our row. We can add some spacing in between image and text, so width of 16 dp, and then afterwards we can put our text, which is, oops, text, which is a bit simpler, where the text is just the text we've defined previously. And here we can also set the modifier to a modifier that weight 1f, so the text fills the remaining half of our row. And then we can actually copy this row and create our detail screen with it. Then we will actually use a column, uh, but we just need to swap out the row with a column in that case and do some very minor adjustments. So in our package hierarchy, we're going to create a detail screen, make that a file composable in here called detail screen. This will now take two arguments. On the one hand, the drawable resource ID that we pass to the screen to know which image to display. And other than that, we also need the text that should be displayed on the detail screen. So we can display both these options, text and image. In here, we can then paste our row. We can change this to a column since on the detail screen, we of course want to display the items on top of each other. Here we can say fill max size and remove the clickable modifier since we don't need that here. But we can say we um, center the text. So we say horizontal alignment is center horizontally. This spacer here needs to be switched to a height spacer to get this spacing in between image and text. And now we're actually ready to implement the shared transition because we have both our screens. Both screens share a specific element. That's of course necessary if we want to have a shared element transition. So let's dive into our main activity and see how this works. Because here we now need a nav host so something that allows us to navigate from the list screen to the detail screen. And that should also allow us to actually make a transition between these two. So we have a nav host. This requires a nav controller, which you can create here with remember nav controller. You can pass it down here. We need to define a start destination as a very first screen that is going to be displayed here. So we say start destination, give this a name of list. So we start off on our list screen. And in this block, we can now define our two screens we have with such composable blocks. On the one hand, again, our list screen, where we say we have our list screen here, where we define our callback lambda. So on item click, here we get reference to the RAS ID and the text we clicked on. And we can perform the transition with our nav controller, just like a normal navigation transition at this point, where we say nav controller, navigate, and we navigate to our detail route slash, and we pass these arguments. On the one hand, the RAS ID, another slash, and our text. Then we can also do the same for our detail screen. So composable, have a route of detail. Here we also need to specify the format our arguments are in. So we first have a RAS ID with these curly braces. And then as a second argument, again, curly braces, we have our text. We then define what types these arguments actually are. So we say arguments is a list of nav argument. This one is for the RAS ID. And we need to specify a type here in these uh, curly braces. That in this case is nav type dot int type because our drawable resource ID is an integer. And as a second nav argument we can pass here, we define our text property. In this case, that's of course a string. So we adjust this and we open our block here of this composable to define what a detail screen looks like in this case. So we just say we use our detail screen composable, pass in a RAS ID. Well, what is that? We first have to retrieve it. We can get this from our nav backstack entry, which we have a reference to here. So when we navigate to our composable, to our detail screen, we get kind of a bundle that includes the um, corresponding nav arguments we've passed here, we had to pass. And we can then retrieve these on the one hand with RAS ID, it arguments dot, actually question mark dot get int. So we first of all want to get our RAS ID. If that's null, which can't happen here because it's a mandatory argument, we just assign a zero to it. And the text is it arguments get string. In this case, give it the key of text. And again, if that's 
Now, which can happen, we use an empty string. We can then pass this here, res ID and text, and this should already allow us to do a basic navigation without shared element transition yet. So there we go. If we now click on an item, then we get to the detail screen. And if we navigate back, then we get back without transition yet, just a sort of normal fade animation here, but we want a shared element transition. So let's take a look at how that works. For that, we can, or we have to take those screens or those composables that are affected by the shared element transition. So in this case, our list screen and our detail screen, we have to take those and put them in such a shared element, um, shared transition scope, this one here. So this is a new composable that is introduced. It is experimental, so we have to opt into this API. So I'll enter on this name, opt into this, and then the error is gone. And then we can take our two, um, so our reference to the nav controller and the nav host, move them in here. And now inside this shared transition scope, we get a reference to this shared transition scope, which gives us access to a special modifier that allows us to perform the transition and to define how the transition actually should look like in the first place. So if we are inside here, we have access to modifier shared element. But if we are outside the scope, we don't have access to that anymore. So here we don't have a shared element modifier. And now what we need to do is we pretty much need to add such a modifier to every single shared element that we want to include in our animation and define how that should work. And in order to do that, we actually need to add this modifier on the one hand to our image here because we want to transition the image and on this text, because we also want to transition this text. Oh, you will notice that if we put our shared element modifier here, it won't recognize that because it doesn't know that this composable is placed within this shared transition scope. So what we can do is we can make sure that we can only call this list screen inside of a shared transition scope by saying shared transition scope dot list screen. We can alt enter again to opt into this API and then scroll down and you will notice that we will have access to this shared element modifier now. In here, we first need to define a state which includes a key. So that lets the uh, Compose framework know which element should actually be transitioned to which. We can get this with remember shared content state and the key just must be unique on um, both screens. So we have uh, image one, for example, and then the framework knows that the image one needs to be transitioned to the image one on the second screen. So we can say for the image that could be image slash RAS ID. So that's a unique key per image. We then need to pass an animated visibility scope. That's actually not our transition scope. So this that list screen will not work because the animated visibility scope is something else we get from we get from our nav host actually. So you can see Within such a composable block, we have an animated content scope, and that is what we need to pass. So that is actually something we need to pass as an argument now, since we can only extend one scope, but we can say, okay, we have an animated visibility scope, pass this down here, and then also pass it here, animated visibility scope. And lastly, if we want to change the animation itself, we can change this bound transform, which is really just a a lambda function that gives us access to the initial bounds and the target bounds, and then lets us define what kind of animation we want to have. In this case, maybe a tween, where we say, okay, the duration millis are maybe one second. And you could also um, set a delay here, which wouldn't make sense for, uh, for a screen transition, or adjust the easing, so how fast the animation plays at which specific point. Since we don't need these bounds, which are, by the way, just rectangles, so how small the image is at first and how large it will be. But in this case, we can just replace these with underscores to ignore them. And that's in the end what we now need to do for the rest of our composables that involve this shared element transition. So we copy this modifier, apply it for our text as well on our list screen. Here we replace the key with text slash and we add our unique text property to just uniquely identify a specific text on our list and the rest can stay as it is. And the same we now need to do on the detail screen as well. So in here, we want to pass an animated visibility scope. We want to extend the shared transition scope. I'll enter, import that here. And then for our image, we paste the shared element modifier. This is correct. So the key now needs to be the same as the key is on the detail screen right here. And the same for our text. Paste this here, replace this with text, and this with text as well. And now this should actually do it. So in our main activity, we of course need to pass this animated visibility scope, which is really just this, yeah, just this. 
and down here as well for the detail screen. So animated visibility scope is this. And I think that should be it. We can launch our app. Take a look here. There we go. Ah, it crashed apparently. Let's take a look here in LockCat. Mm, we get a crash. And the reason is, oh, that's a very long crash message. Lady in the property look ahead route has not been initialized. I am not sure if I did something wrong or if this is a bug in the Compose framework, because I am not using any late init property here. All right, I found it. I actually made a mistake here in the shared transition scope. This should not be a scope, but a layout. So shared transition layout will also give us the scope. Little difference, quite error prone, but let's try this again. There we go. Now our app is at least launching. And if we now click on an item, we see our shared element transition. Very cool. Looks a bit weird here because we uh, kept the weights, but you, you get the idea. This one works as well. It's of course still experimental. So if you might encounter a bug here and there or some laggy transitions, I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised about that at this point. But everything that is alpha at some point will become stable at some point as well. So I'm very confident that we will soon have a very cool shared element transition framework on Jetpack Compose. All right, thanks for watching. Again, last reminder to get my courses for 25% off. This is really the last call. The prices will rise in a few hours and then also definitely stay up there for a while. Link in this video's description. Other than that, thanks for watching. Have an amazing rest of your week. See you back in the next video. Bye bye.